Today's experiment will be looking at whether or not CO2 makes the ocean acidic. Because every time we breathe out, every time we turn on a car, every time we use our electricity, in some capacity, we produce carbon dioxide, largely through combustion reactions. I'm Caleb Fleming. I've been teaching chemistry and other sciences for the last 12 years. This is a wonderful experiment that lets students and myself see the effect of carbon dioxide on oceanic ecosystems. The topic has significantly more depth than I'll cover today, so if you have a little bit to add to the conversation, please do so in the comments. Here's what we know so far. Combustion reactions take a variety of forms. You can light a match, you could light sugar, you could make a fireball, you could do a whoosh bottle, you could do the fire syringe, Every time we react these carbon compounds with oxygen, we produce pure water, which is great because we need fresh water. The problem can arise with the other product, carbon dioxide. This is called the Keeling curve. In 1958, Charles David Keeling started collecting data about carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in Hawaii. We can see in the 60 years of data collection that the CO2 in parts per million goes up by about 100. But what does that do to the ocean? In the late 80s, we started collecting data about what the increased CO2 in the atmosphere was doing to the amount of CO2 dissolved in the ocean. And that data showed there was an increasing amount of CO2 developing in the ocean. So we're sort of making the ocean more carbonated. So what? At the same time, we started collecting data about what was going on with the pH in the ocean. The pH started at about 8.15. And now those readings are at about 8.05. And if you're like me, you think, oh, 0.1. We're good, but that's because we didn't pay enough attention in math class when our teachers told us what the log was. The pH scale is a log scale. Take this graph for example, number of space chickens living on the moon in 2055. It looks like things start to happen at around years eight to 10. The first eight years look like they have about the same amount of space chickens. But if we change the y-axis to be in bases of 10, we see a different picture. Now we see for the first eight years, the number of space chickens was actually increasing linearly. Like take years six to seven, for example. Those look like they're at about zero in the first graph because in comparison to 10 billion, they're such tiny numbers they don't seem to show up. But a million and a hundred million space chickens is a significant feat for our avian friends. The pH scale is also a log scale. And that 0.1 increase represents a 30% increase of dissolved CO2. And that means something. So check this out. If we think about our gas-filled cars, every gallon of gas that we burn pumps out about 19.6 pounds of CO2, which is weird because the gas only weighs about six pounds, but that's the stoichiometry of adding in the oxygen. So for a 10 gallon tank, that's about 200 pounds of CO2 per tank. And oftentimes that's just for driving for places less than five miles. And I'm equally guilty. So let's consider this candle to be our car engine. Then we have our ocean. It's probably not in your immediate surroundings, but maybe you've visited. When I was in third grade, my dad went on this trip to Australia with my family, and we got to swim around in the Great Barrier Reef and see these giant 50 pound clams and piranhas and all kinds of crazy huge eels and sharks. And it's an incredible, incredible place. All kinds of diversity of life there. So this is our ocean. If you try this experiment, we get the best results using distilled water, which is not what the ocean actually is, and I know that, but we wanna see results quickly and not over the course of several hours. Now what we need is a way to visualize the CO2 entering the ocean. This is where this indicator comes in. It's called Universal Indicator. I grabbed this on Amazon for like 30 bucks. I'll toss in a little link if you wanna try this experiment yourself. When Universal Indicator is neutral, it's about green. If we add some base, like sodium hydroxide, it starts to turn bluish purple. For context, the ocean currently has a pH of about eight, so that makes it slightly basic. Seven is neutral. And if we add some kind of acid, like hydrochloric, it'll turn back to neutral, yellow, and red. Sometimes too quickly to really see, but yellow and red, those are our acidic colors. I added about 50 drops so we could really see what happens inside of our ocean. To show the increase in CO2 in our atmosphere, we'll cover the flame and let it collect. Let the candle burn all the way down and then just let it sit for a minute and the CO2 starts to settle inside of our ocean. If you look at it from the top, it doesn't really look like anything happened, but if you look from the side and slightly below, you see this really interesting yellowish red band. 
That means that CO2 from our candle is turning the water slightly acidic. If we let the candle burn a little bit longer and then add a few more drivers to the road, we can see that the ocean really starts to turn acidic, especially when we do this year after year. What happens is the CO2 from our combustion hits the ocean and becomes carbonic acid. Carbonic acid's a weak acid, which means it doesn't always give up those hydrogens, but when that hydrogen ion does leave and combine with another water to make hydronium, that's what makes something acidic. The thing that's left behind now is called bicarbonate, and bicarbonate can act as a buffer, which means it can both take up hydrogens and it can give away hydrogens. When it gives away another hydronium, it can make the ocean even more acidic. In the one perk is this final guy is carbonate, and our little buddies with shells, like oysters, can combine the carbonate and calcium to make new shell. But all the acid that was produced initially from that carbonic acid makes it challenging for our little shelled friends to do this, and they end up using extra energy. When they go to grab carbonate, they have to sift through the hydroniums, and that costs them extra energy, and that means less of them survive. So what can we do? Use a little less energy? This year, I'm trying to bike to work. I love it. I would never actually just get up and bike, but I've loved the adventure of trying to bike the, I'm only three miles from work, but my three miles to work each day. Sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's cold, sometimes I find a fun little random thing on the road. Found some chain oil the other day. Very exciting treasure. One thing I can tell you though, is I've only driven twice this year, and that feels pretty cool. Think about what you can do, and maybe we can slow down this Keeling curve a little bit and help save some of our little aquatic buddies. I really hope you try this experiment. It's given me a lot to think about, and I wanna thank Mark for developing this experiment. Great job, and thank you for being interested in your world. Check out this rad experiment that'll pop up somewhere here, and stay curious. I'll see you soon. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell.